Hello listeners. Before we start today's episode, we just wanted to note that this is not the full version of City Hunter, Shinjuku Private Eyes. Rather, it is a discussion of the film. If you want to watch the film, it is available for streaming on Crunchyroll's website and related apps. It is also available on home video from Discotech and can be purchased on Right Stuff and wherever fine anime is sold. Warning! The Dub Talk podcast may contain language and content that may not be suitable for younger audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Listeners should please be aware that there will be spoilers for City Hunter, Shinjuku Private Eyes, so they may want to watch the movie first before listening to the episode. Finally, the opinions expressed belong to those of the individual participants and do not reflect the Dub Talk podcast as a whole. Enjoy the show. Hey girl, what are you up to? Are you from around here? What's happening, friends, fans, and fam, and welcome to another episode of Dub Talk. This is the podcast where a group of sweepers get together to discuss the latest and greatest English anime dubs. Tonight, we are all about the Blossom-esque, very special episode. Not only is it time for Dub Talk Summer at the Movies, but we have a totally tubular surprise for you. My name is Gigi, and my partner in crime tonight is Mr. Amandul himself. Hello there. Nice to meet you. But wait, there's more. We have, get ready for this, the most radical guest to talk about tonight's movie with us. Please join me in welcoming our most wicked cool guest host, Dawn from the Anime Nostalgia Podcast. Hello. Somebody wrote XYZ on a message board and I just appeared. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy you did. Finally, somebody got my secret code. (laughs) Oh, it makes me so happy. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Oh, girl trust. I'm very excited you are here. <laughs> I was I was like, when I knew what we were doing, I the first thing I thought of was, oh, I should ask Dawn to come be on this podcast. And then I was like, oh, God, I hope she says yes. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> even if she doesn't, I'm going to set myself up for disappointment. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Never, never. Oh, gosh. Well, if you couldn't tell from all the choice 80s slang I just hit you with, tonight we will be talking all about the English dub for the brand new City Hunter movie, City Hunter Shinjuku Private Eyes. I mean, I took my best shot. No one's going to get that joke because I think I fucked it up, but that's okay. The (laughs) first City Hunter anime premiered in 1987 and ran in various forms through 1999. And 20 years later, the same production team came out with a brand new movie. However, while your favorite characters like Ryo Saiba, Kaori Makimura, and Saiko Nogami may look like they're stuck in the 80s, this movie has done the time skip to end all time skips and has dropped them right into 2019. So, like, Rio flies a drone. (laughs) (laughs) A pink Uh, drone. Exactly. The drones are the enemies. The enemies of Shinjuku. Oh, my God. There are so many drones in this movie, my mind. (laughs) I just just can't wrap it around. (laughs) City Hunter Shinjuku Private Eyes was released in Japan in 2019 and premiered later that year with a brand new English dub in the United States at Otakon 2019. It was later released on Blu-ray just a couple months ago from Discotech Media and was dubbed by our friends at Sound Cadence Studios. You can watch this both subbed and dubbed streaming on Crunchyroll as well. Okay, guys, so the cast from the original anime came back in Japan from all those years ago. But what do you think? Do you think Sound Cadence would bring back the voice actors from when ADV dubbed a handful of OVAs in the movies in the early 2000s? Well, we're here to investigate like our girl Psycho but we definitely won't be handing out Mokori coupons. (laughs) None of that. None of that. Thank God. I know, right? (laughs) I was like, nobody wants those. (laughs) We'll just shove them in the back. My Photoshop skills wasted. No, I'm just joking. (laughs) So, okay. I know the answer. We all know the answer to if they would bring back the old dub cast, but... They didn't. Um, they tried, from what I know. Um, they tried to bring back the old actors from the ADV dub, but like some of them retired from voice acting. I think one of them died. Uh, oh. So instead of trying to do the whole nostalgia thing to the 80th degree, they just recast everyone, which we'll talk about in a little bit. 
I don't know. Did you? Did anybody watch the ADV dub? I've seen some of it, not all of it, but some of it. Um, it was, mm, it was okay. Uh, it, I mean, it was, it was an AD dub from the early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. I I was gonna say like you know for for ADV and for its time it was you know passable. I was not amused. <laughs> I, I watched it and I was just like, what is this? <laughs> I was like, let me go back to the sub, please. Because you can actually watch some of it on Crunchyroll now before they replace it. So hurry up and go watch it. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But I was just like, no, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I've I, always been a real big fan of the original Japanese voice actors. Because, I mean, there's just so many really huge names. Like, I mean, Akira Kamiya plays Ryo and he's just like an icon. Like, it's really hard to cast someone in that role uh, when you have such, like, a huge voice, uh, you know, playing that part. Um, I can't remember his name, the guy who did the ADV one. He was, like, he was okay. Um, I didn't really care for um, Kaori's voice in, no. in the uh, ADV dub, though. No, me either. Or Psycho's. I was just... I was not feeling it. No. Like, I think, like, with all of these characters, you kind of have to have, like, a a double face with them. Like, you have to be able to play two separate characters inside of one. And, I mean, it was the early 2000s ADV dubs. Yeah. I can't think of another one off the top of my head. I don't know. This is before my time. <laughs> my time with dub talk, Amon. I don't know. <laughs> Well, right. uh, a lot of stuff that ADV did, like, uh, you know, they were they were a really small company for, like, a long time. It wasn't until, like, you know, the early to mid-2000s that they really started, you know, branching out and becoming a bigger company before the whole bubble happened and everything collapsed. So, you know, some of the, their earlier stuff is, like, a little, like, rough around the edges. And... Sometimes it's charming, uh, but other times, like, uh, not so much. <laughs> other times I mean, you're just, uh, other times you're just like, well, I guess this is what they had to work with. <laughs> Some of those early anime dubs, like, I'm thinking of Revolutionary Girl Utena <laughs> comes to mind. Are just god awful. Oh, yeah, that was. Um, that was Central Park Media, wasn't it? Or no, it Sof- was Software Sculptures. No, it, mm, I think it was CPM. CPM sounds right. Yeah, yeah. One or the other. It's been a while, <laughs> but oh ooh, yeah, that one. <laughs> that one was rough. <laughs> Everyone who keeps requesting that Utena episode, I'm the reason why you're not getting it. Oh, can't, look, can't look, torture myself. Look, kids, I understand. You're looking at the cast list. You see young Kristen Freeman is there you think it's gonna be a good it's not it's it's I I long long ago I tried to watch Utena by getting the single volumes out of the library until I hit a volume that had been lost and never repurchased at some point and that dub is not interesting to listen to it's just kind of boring and it's weird when you can make Utena seem kind of boring that's not a great sign no Mm -hmm. woof all right well we're not. We're we're done. We're done talking about the old school. We're gonna go into the new school. Um, if you have yet to see the film, here's a quick recap, lovingly written by Anime News Network. Ryo Saiba is a sniper and private eye, a sweeper, based in Tokyo's Shinjuku ward, who possesses unrivaled marksmanship and an over-the-top obsession for the opposite sex. Wow, that's a really nice way to put it. <laughs> he and his partner. <laughs> <laughs> Kaori Makimura serve as bodyguards and perform other duties for his clients. Their latest client is Ai Shindo, a model who's been attacked by mysterious people and unknowingly holds the key to a vast citywide conspiracy. Now, who's ready to tight roll their jeans and crimp their hair? Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's time to get wild and tough, friends. Oh, yeah. There. Those those are my puns. <laughs> oh. I, I, I may or may not be done. <laughs> Oh, I hope you're not. We're only, like, we're not even (laughs) ten minutes in. Wow, I'm making really good time. (laughs) All right. um, So before we go into the dub cast, we're going to talk about the glue that holds it all together, the writing and the directing. 
Um, They had big shoes to fill because City Hunter hadn't been dubbed since the very early 2000s. And like we just said, it wasn't that great. But it is beloved in Japan and in the United States. So tackling this gigantic task of a franchise film. Uh, the director we have, Amber Lee Connors. And for our writer, we have Marissa Lenti. Other anime that Amber Lee Connors has directed include uh, actors, Song Connection, Hells, and Galaxy Express 3.9 Eternal Fantasy. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And our friend Marissa Lenti has written actors, Song Connection, Bloom Into You, and Kase-san and Morning Glories. All right, friends. So they had a really big task ahead of them. There's a couple of things about City Hunter that I was kind of worried about when I was going into this episode, which is if you take it from the 80s to 2019, people in 2019 are going to see so much of this as, quote, problematic, my least favorite word in the universe, Um, just because um, Rio's catchphrase is like Mokori. Mokori, <laughs> as translated in, in the dub, means nookie. So early 2000s, you could tell the limp biscuit that was into this dub. Thanks, Fred Durst. Um, it's also translated as boner. And he, like, harasses ladies to the nth degree, grabbing what he shouldn't be grabbing and doing all this wild shit but luckily Kaori's there with her giant mallet of doom to smack him over the head and be like don't touch them so I mean it was a big task to try and adapt something to like show all that stuff because it's left in this movie um, but still kind of like let everybody know that you know don't go calling everybody problematic all the time this is gonna be throughout the whole show so i don't know what did you guys think about the writing and the directing oh me first i go (laughs) anybody who wants anybody (laughs) jump in i it's a pool full of mokori coupons that (laughs) oh no i'm gonna i'm gonna shred later (laughs) (laughs) oh man Um, so I, this was actually my first time watching the movie. I had been meaning to watch it for ages, uh, and this gave me the perfect excuse to get off my lazy butt and actually watch it. Um, and the, the script writing I thought was actually, like, pretty good, uh, considering the source material. Um, I was really curious to see how they were going to translate Mukori because, I couldn't remember how they translated it in the ADB version. Uh, I don't know if they were the ones that came up with Nookie or if uh, this was the thing that they came up with. Um, But, I mean, it works and it's a lot less um, gross. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, If you know, like, what Macquarie actually is referring to. Um, So, I I was, like pretty i was like okay i get this and i i feel like it softens it a bit and makes it a little bit more um uh, palatable (laughs) because then he just comes off as this like sort of weirdo who's like just obsessed with flirting and it's not as kind of overtly like uh gross creepy. and creepy i mean it's yeah. it's still kind of gross and creepy but like a little bit more in the like oh it's anime sort of way that uh i think a lot of anime fans are kind of used to at this point which not not to say that that's a good thing uh, as <laughs> it it is a weird gray area because there's a lot of people who like, I say, like, oh, City Hunter is really great. You should check it out. And then they watch some of it, and they're like, is it really? <laughs> is like, it? Yes. Is you just it? have to get past this. And I'm like, I know. it's it, He comes off really strong, and sometimes it's really gross. However, <laughs> however, if you, if you realize, like, okay, that is there, and that's a thing. But the other stuff makes up for it like the characters are really great the action is really great uh the stories are fun and um when when they start getting like serious and interesting like it it 
it's just really exciting. It's like watching really good old 80s action movies uh, is what I like to tell people. I'm like, you know, those really fun movies where it's like, ooh, he's so, he's the good guy, but he's not always good. And he just plays by his own rules. And there's guns and there's explosions. And sometimes there's a cute girl, you know? <laughs> uh, I just like... I. I like how how they did it. Like I think they did it very respectful to the original anime, but uh-huh. they had to update it. Like it had to have that 80s flair. Mm-hmm. But then they're talking on a smartphone and yeah. like she's she's playing Pokemon or whatever. Um, yeah, she was playing some sort of um some uh online like mobile game that looked like uh it looked like a real game. It made me wonder if they had some sort of like um, promotional tie-in with like an actual Japanese mobile game, because there was a lot of like not very subtle market product placement going on <laughs> <laughs> in a few scenes. <laughs> but um, I'm, sh- I'm sure it could be. I mean, it was made by Sunrise. They're basically made to sell toys. Right. Right. So I was like, hmm, that could be a real game, but I have no idea. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no, I, I agree that, like, uh, the, the script I thought was pretty well done because it kind of just sort of effortlessly seemed to just put them in, like, a modern situation, but it didn't feel, like, super out of place to me. Um, it just felt like okay, we're just picking right up where we left off. Like, cool. Okay. I'm I'm in for that. I I approve. <laughs> Pl- <laughs> plus, like, isn't 80s stuff supposed to be, like, super trendy right now? Like, it is incredibly trendy. <laughs> yes. Like, the 80s aesthetic, as the kids say, like, is really, really hot right now. Um, so, honestly, like, everything they, they're wearing, like, could be considered, like, super fashionable. <laughs> I was waiting for the the sweater vest to to bust out, or like the pastel <laughs> the pastel polo shirt with the popped collar. Oh, no. Zach Morris, why, why do you laugh? Why do you laugh about my Zach Morris obsession? <laughs> well, Rio looks like you know he he could be borrowing like uh, his wardrobe from Miami Vice. So exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh. If I, if I watch I'm this on... again, I need to see if he's ever drawn without socks in any of the shots. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he could get away with it. That's the right outfit for it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. No socks. What do you think, my friend? Uh, I enjoy. I enjoyed this double lot. Uh, I'm... I'm the neophyte here. I mostly know City Hunter by reputation. This is the first, I think, say, maybe, like, aside from, like, clips somewhere, this is the first actual City Hunter thing I've ever sat down and watched. Uh, and at least as far as the neophyte goes, like, I had a lot of fun with this. I think it it, it did a good job of capturing that glee, really, like, 80s action movie vibe that City Hunter kind of thrives on. But it also, but it, I thought it also did a good job feeling like, like, you know, ah, this is set in 2019. Uh, it's not so distractingly retro. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, also, and, you know, I'm not super well versed in kind of like how the characters go, but at the very least, like, it all felt right. It's like, yeah, this, this feels like this is how Rio is supposed to act. And these are how the jokes are supposed to land. Yeah. Uh, and this is, and it felt like, I it felt like the comedy was well integrated as well. I thought they did a good job of making it, you know, it was sort of like the Macquarie thing, like putting it into English, but not feeling the need to futz too much with kind of the core conceit underneath. Um, mm-hmm. Also, it made me realize that, you know what I really miss? People getting hit with hammers in anime. I, I did not realize that was a trope I missed until watching this. And it's like, man, this is wonderful. Why did this fall off, of all things? This is great. You, got, you gotta hit the horny boy with the hammer. I know. It's. I'll, I'll be honest, him being a skeeve was alleviated a lot when it often just felt like, no, this is just a setup for him to get smashed in the head with a 100-ton hammer. I'm okay with this. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like he always gets away with like every weird and creepy thing he says like he he gets a lot of abuse for it which is yeah. like you know to prove like no kids this is bad we are telling you this is not good this is bad um also kaori like she could single-handedly bring back hammer space like please let's know, bring right? that back 
<laughs> if if your younger listeners have no idea what hammer space is, Google it. <laughs> You'll be in for a ride. Because <laughs> that oh was a thing. That was definitely a huge thing from like what the 80s to like maybe late 90s and then it just kind of disappeared yeah just it just it just stopped being a thing and i never thought about it until now it's like wow that just it's like i got i got an anime in like basically the tail end of the 90s that was 100 percent part of what anime fans talked about and it just vanished all of a sudden yeah i am i'm perfectly i'd be perfectly happy to see you get a comeback frankly this was this is a lot of fun Yeah, I, I, I got a really good laugh from Kaori's, like, her first hammer thing in the movie. I believe her hammer said something like, um, what was it, uh, like, 2020, or no, 2019, like, special, like, anniversary yeah. hammer yeah. or something. <laughs> I think it was, it was, like, special commemorative hammer yes. or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that made me laugh. I was, <laughs> I was like, yes, the hammer. That's how I knew what the date of the movie was. I was like, <laughs> is this supposed to take place in the 80s? And then she said 2019. I was like, oh, no, I get it. Because I went in blind. Like, literally before that, I'd watched five hours of original Japanese City Hunter. And I like going in, I was like, oh, this is different. It looks so much better. Oh, yeah, right. Um, like, it looks it's great. The animation is, like, so good in those old uh, City Hunter episodes. Uh, a lot of that has to do with uh, Koji Morimoto uh, being one of the first directors. And he's just, like, so stylish and so detailed. And his eye for uh, art and direction is just impeccable. Like, everything he does looks gorgeous. Um so like if you if you queue up like any of the like old city hunter openings but especially like the first couple of ones cuz I think he did the key animation for those they are just oh. stunning. Mm. They're so good. They're so nice. Just like that whole 80s aesthetic, guys. Mhm. You'll mm-hmm. like it. Go look them up on YouTube. They're there cuz I've been listening to them all day. Yes. Um so I uh I really liked the writing and directing here. Uh, I think my favorite line and the line that kind of like summed up the movie for me was, you can't go around harassing women. It's, women, it's not the 80s anymore. And I was like, okay, <laughs> there it is. Yes. See, that for me like set the tone. I was like, this is going to happen, but you have to remember this. So everybody watching it, that's what you got to remember. Yeah, um, you have to basically remember that Rio Saiba is an 80s like gag character, basically trapped in an action series. Yes. And he's never going to grow up. He's never going to change. It's He's always going to just be that way. <laughs> <laughs> I really liked um, a couple of lines like fly fast and make Papa proud when Rio was like flying his, his drone. The oh, God. The drone. That's what he <laughs> called it. Um, it said Eros on the, on the side of it. <laughs> God bless him. The drone of erotica, his little pink drone that he used to peep on the women in the changing room. (laughs) Um, The only thing I do have to say that's kind of critical is like when they were talking like straight man lines. And by that, I mean, like trying to move the plot along or there was a scene where Kaori was talking to I and she was just kind of like questioning her. They felt a little bit stilted. But I mean, it's like a questioning thing with, Mm -hmm. you know characters so like you got to do what you got to do um i like that there was a lot of cursing i'm always pro cursing in anything because that's how people talk especially in an action based movie yeah like Mm -hmm. the first thing i heard was fuck or get the fuck out of here and i was like (laughs) i was like okay i'm in like you got my attention now thank you and Um, i think they can get away with that considering like this wasn't this isn't part of the tv show it's a movie so it's like you know, you can be a little bit more. Uh, you can drop a few more f bombs in there. They can, they can, yeah, they can was, R-rate it up a little. Yeah, <laughs> I was watching the interview that came after it with, um, I believe, one of the producers, and he had said that City Hunter used to be on at seven o'clock at night, so they had to make something that was both family friendly and for the adults. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think other than the mallet, I would ever consider City Hunter family friendly. But whatever works for you, dude. It was 1987, man? I don't know what happened. Um, yeah, I think yeah. it's because it's a you know it's a Shonen Jump title, technically. Mm, technically. So like. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, which is hilarious because now when we think of Shonen Jump, we think of like, you know, teen boys to like maybe young adult boys. Uh, for the most part, like that's sort of the sweet spot for Shonen Jump. But like back in the day, like Shonen Jump was kind of just like all over the place uh, in regards to uh, content. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> I'd be like, that's not Naruto, kids. Don't take <laughs> De- that too seriously. <laughs> Definitely not Naruto. <laughs> um, I did like that they translated Mokori to Nuki just because it, it took some of that 90s or the early 2000s dub back to it. And it was, it, Nuki's just a fun word to say. I don't know. Yeah, um, and it has kind of lo- like a similar sound. Uh, yeah. Nuki, Mokori. Mokori. Nuki. Because like... It. Yeah, I can't really think of anything else you would use for that. Like, that's kind of it. <laughs> I mean, the other the other translation that came in like a subtitle was boner, and I was like, oh, you can't be saying that all the time. That's not. Yeah, funny you can't all the just time. go around throwing boner. That just makes you sound ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, you could just go around throwing boners everywhere, but <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that's that's an after dark show, kids. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, like and, I was saying uh, earlier, I feel like uh, Nuki just kind of softens it a little bit, makes it a little bit more uh, <laughs> palatable. <laughs> I love it. Um, I liked for directing wise, um, you kind of had to decide if you were going to stay true to that 80s tone or redo it. And I think um, Amber made the right move by keeping the nostalgic charm, but updating it, which is exactly what the movie did. Mm-hmm. Um and then I thought she had really good casting choices. Honestly, for me, a lot of them were unexpected because, well, a couple were kind of expected and a couple were unexpected because if I have to look people up, <laughs> that means they're unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> but just so everyone knows, David Wald is in this dub. Don't think I didn't find him. He plays I's dad. He has like three lines. You're welcome. Oh, okay. Found him. I'm obsessed with David Wald. He oh, is he's the greatest human being on the planet. <laughs> he's great. I uh, I loved him as the narrator in um, Tonegawa. Like, yes, yes. Uh, I I was actually one of the people that um, what was it a year or two ago? Um, I was one of the people that nominated him for uh, the an- the anime awards. Oh, uh, God bless you. Because I was like, he's just so. He's so good because <laughs> the the narrator in that is like the most important role, and he like nailed it. So, I'm... Yeah, I watched I watched that just for him. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> so I I'm definitely very pro David Wald. Like I want Yay. I want all the best for him. Do you hear that, sir? <laughs> you hear that? I know you're listening right now. All right. <laughs> All right, we have anything else to say about the the structure that holds this whole dub together? I think it's like you said, I feel like they found a really great way to um, keep sort of the, the nostalgia factor in the script, but keep it modern. Uh, and I know that couldn't have been easy. That must have been a lot of work for them, but it comes off like... Uh, really really well thought out yeah i I, it's really it's it's yeah like i I agree i think it's really solid like i i I, part of me is almost hopes that um i doubt we'll get a dub of the tv show but uh, if discotech wants to like pull some money together to dub a couple of the other like movies or tv specials when they put that on home video with this cast and crew like i'm not going to complain about that at all i'd be perfectly happy to hear them again Oh, that I would love that. That would be pretty great. Yeah, I, I think dubbing the whole series would just be no, I, way too much. Let, 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 unless mm-hmm. Discotech just suddenly like some some billionaire died and leaves their entire fortune just to Discotech. Uh, that, oh please. Yeah, yeah that <laughs> that might be a little much for them. But uh, you know, if they want to do like with some of their Lupin stuff, they dubbed and just like individual pieces. Like I'd be happy with that. Mm. That'd be cool. Totally, yeah, like the specials or whatnot, like, that would be really, really cool to see. Uh, especially since, like, a couple of the, the old specials, like, they, they were dubbed, but I feel like um, they, they just weren't as strong, like we were saying earlier. And some of them have, like, I believe, was it the Bay City? Oh, I can't remember the title of it. The Bay City one 
had a kind of similar-ish story to this. Not quite, but like it had like, ooh, there's a big tech thing and there's like espionage going on and blah, blah, blah. Um, so like bring back the whole crew, have them redub it. Like it would probably fit really well. I would love that. Disco Tech, are you listening? I know you don't probably listen to this. <laughs> Mr. Disco Tech, listen. please. <laughs> Justin? <laughs> Hello. I'll, I'll give you $20. No, I'm just joking. No, I'm not. All right. Let's start talking about some of our cast. Let's start talking about the new characters that were made just for this movie. Um, so we have Shinji Mikuni, who is like our big bad here. He's like... Oh my gosh. Oh, Shinji. Hmm. He's the big bad like CEO of the company and he starts out like everybody loves him, like he's the eligible bachelor, and then he turns batshit crazy. So who else would play him but Christopher Waycamp? Oh, Christopher Waycamp. Uh, you may know him as Susumu Kodai from the dub of Star Blazers 2099, from my favorite Bruno from the Royal Tutor, or as most of you know him as Eraserhead from My Hero Academia. I got a thing with Chris Waycamp. He knows how I feel. Um, anytime he gets <laughs> to play evil, he shines. Like, it's, it's, I don't know if maybe I haven't seen a lot of things where he's played evil, but I just feel like as he, the character progressed, like he's like the nice golden boy, literally like the blonde guy who takes out Kaori and like, is like, I just want to, you know, make your dreams come true. Come work for me. And she's like, well, but as soon as like that starts to fall apart and he starts to get more and more into um, his drone weapons kind of taking over the world, um, it, it, it just, he goes full on psycho and mm -hmm. th that's my jam. I like the crazy <laughs> ones. So um, this is definitely a, a crazy one for me. I just, I loved that progression. Because at the beginning, I really didn't think he was going to be that bad. I thought it was going to be the glasses sidekick with the dark Ooh, hair. Yeah. I was like, uh, oh, he's going to be evil. And no, nope. mm -hmm. I was like, ah. Oh. But then I was like, okay, I get to hear Chris Waycamp go crazy. And that kind of makes my day. <laughs> On a spiritual level. Yeah, I wasn't expecting any big twists because it's Cindy Hunter and they don't usually go that far. Um, so I was like, oh, no, this guy's totally, he's the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is it. <laughs> but I, I was expecting him to sort of be like more of a sympathetic bad guy. Like he was doing bad things and just was like, oh, but I didn't realize it was going to end this way. Because like at first he's like really charming and really nice. Um but then he, like you said, he sort of goes off the deep end and goes full crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I thought he did a really great job, uh, especially in the beginning where, you know, you're just like, oh, OK, he's nice and and polite and sweet. Like you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop and you're like, ah, there it is. There it is. <laughs> I watched this with my boyfriend I probably shouldn't have in, in retrospect. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god! And he was like, shut up. <laughs> he was like, look, there are guns. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> this is what happens. I can't, I can't control it. It's just a thing that happens. The boy crazy just jumps out sometimes. I'm on what you got about Mr. Waycamp here. Mr. Waycamp does a very good job, I think. He, he, he. I, I think you know. I haven't thought about it, but I think you're correct. He has a he's a good voice for villains, especially you know, some like Shinji, where you know he can he can he can voice that suit so well. He has that just correct level of kind of like, mm, yes, he's, he seems so so sophisticated and and classy and, and so on. And then time goes on, it's like, oh, oh, you're you're terrible. Oh, <laughs> oh dear, and he can do he can do that really well too. He just he, he's got he's got that good range for kind of that like, you know, charming but sinister bad guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I enjoyed him a lot in here. Just... He's he's a a good reminder as to why rich people are so bad. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> they spend all their money on killer drones and then expect us to follow them for some reason. <laughs> Maybe not to get shot. I mean, that, I, I, the killer drone does seem like a good reason to follow the guy with the killer drone. 
Why should, why should I listen to you? Well, I have a killer drone that you don't. Oh, so okay. Fair, fair enough. Fair. What, what if I have a, a drone with a rocket launcher? I guess we all have a drone fight and see who wins then, won't we? Oh my gosh, we're all going to die. Okay. <laughs> Chris Waycamp, bang up job on the new guy. Um, our other new character is um, basically, you know, the the girl of the episode. If you've watched the old City Hunter series, almost every episode has this random girl that comes in and takes over Rio's life and his job. And then we never see again. Yep. So when I was watching the series, I was like, it's hard to tell which ones are going to come back. And I was like, is this one coming back? No. Is this one coming back? No. no. How about this one? Uh uh-uh. uh. I was like, what about Psycho? She's got to come back, right? She's the best. Yes, that one comes back. I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Uh, I Shindo, who is our episode girl here, is played by Tia Ballard. You may know her as Nanami from Kamisama Kiss, Sister Nana from Magical Girl Raising Project, or Sarah Crispino from my fave Yuri on Ice. Um, I, I, Tia Ballard always does a good job in everything she does. I really think that girl can do no wrong. She played like, didn't she play that little jellyfish thing in Princess Jellyfish? Oh, Clara the Jellyfish? I think she did. That wouldn't surprise me. That seems right? like something she would do. It was either that or no, she is happy in fairy tale too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't write those down guys. I wrote down random things. Um, but everything that she does, she just does so well. Um, and this character, she's a, a straight up college girl in 2019. So, I mean, you have to have a lot of weird mood swings. To, to do that um i think her performance for i was equal parts angry and cute and sexy and sad and confused but she still had to be independent um and straightforward but in with a tiny little bit of innocence thrown in there i think my favorite scene was the one where um rio takes her to that bar and he's like up on the stage with a little silver platter in front of his mokori you know? oh god <laughs> And she's just like ah. trying not to get drunk, and she's like, "Get me out of here!" And then she gets wasted, and she's like, "Oh, okay, this is fine." <laughs> like that thing's too big, and I was like, "Yep, that sounds about accurate." That was probably my favorite <laughs> scene that she was in. <laughs> I mean, it takes a lot. Like she's a model. Like she has to decide what she's gonna do for her career, and then there's like the the med school thing she wanted to do and mm-hmm. just a lot going on with I. She seems to be a very complicated episodic girl. But I mean, I guess it's for a movie, so it has to be a little more involved. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're going to see her on the screen for way longer than we see like a, a TV series episode girl. So she's a little <laughs> bit more in depth than we're used to uh, for some of these, which is, which is good though. Um, she was a cool character. Uh, I love that not only is the thing that we see her for her modeling is like for a contact lens, right? <laughs> yes. Um, but her name is also I. Oh, uh... no, I never put that together. <laughs> it's all connected because, you know, also private eyes and uh... sweepers. <laughs> Don, only you could make that. <laughs> connection god bless you <laughs> i was just like oh this this the title goes on so many levels <laughs> they, oh. they really they really wanted to drive that home <laughs> which oh i thought was gosh. great but um but no like tia i think she did she did an excellent job um i thought i was a really fun character she she was pretty good at like not only being, you know, the thing that, you know, kind of helped the plot move along, but also, uh, you know, because of her, we got to see, like, okay, so uh, how, how, are, how are Rio and Kaori doing now? <laughs> like, what have they been up to? Uh, which, which is always fun. <laughs> What booby traps can we set today? <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I thought uh, I think 
my favorite part with her was when we see uh, that one part where they, they help the little girl at the park. And she's talking oh, yeah. about how she wanted to go to med school and be a nurse or a doctor. Uh, and, you know, she's helping the little girl who scraped her knees. And, and she's like, there, you know, all better. And, like, so it was just, just a really cute scene. And, uh, you know, we got, like, a lot of character exposition in that. And I thought it was really well done and very sweet. And, you know, one of the rare times where Rio is just, like, actually standing still, listening, being good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yes, thank you for not pulling a Makori in the park, Rio. God bless. Even, even Rio knows when there's a time to not spoil the mood. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I can read the room. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was a really sweet scene. And um, overall, she just, you know, it's like you said, she's pretty she's pretty much excellent in everything I've seen her in. So um, when I saw her on the cast list, I was like, oh, this this will be good. Like, she's definitely going to do a good job with this. Speaking of the cast list, it made me very happy and had much less research for me to do. When at the very beginning, in the main credits, was everybody who was in it, and their character, and a picture. I was like, God bless. This is the best intro sequence I've ever had the pleasure of working with. I can it's just so, press pause and write it down. <laughs> it's so very, uh, very 80s, isn't it? It's very, like... It is. Mm. It's like, it's Zach Morris, Saber the Bell. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's, see, I'm just going to keep bringing up Zach Morris. <laughs> Even though I I don't know like I kind of was a Slater girl but I think I'm really a Zach Morris girl at, in my heart. I mean, poor Kano lost dose. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Mom, what did you think about Tia? I thought Tia did a great job. Um, like I agree with what's been said. I thought like um. I, you know, I had some substance to her, and I think Tia just did a good job of capturing a lot of that. Um, I, she, you know, I thought she did the more dramatic moments well, but I also thought she was just very funny. Um, I get some... Mm. <laughs> just, I like the part where she they're they're being attacked outside the, the bar, and she just picks up the machine gun and tries to fire her oh. oh, that was <laughs> hilarious. Just, that was funny. It's just like, oh, you're... Bless you. for You're, you're trying. You're doing... You're doing... <laughs> keep it up, sweetie. <laughs> You're doing your best. <laughs> Out of all the things for her to grab, a machine gun, you're like, oh, 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 this oh, could possibly no. go wrong. <laughs> Especially when you remember that, like, you know, guns are practically illegal in Japan. Yep. So <laughs> there's no way she would know how to use that, Abs- let alone a machine gun. Like, Absolutely she would know how to not. use a regular gun. She, she, <laughs> so- she has a vague notion that there's a thing you pull and, and you try and point it in the right direction. <laughs> Right. So that's a grenade, right? <laughs> this is why I don't play with guns. Exactly. Never. Kickback? What's that? <laughs> oh, oh, this is a new fun. Th- oh, why am I in that guy's house? Okay, that's fine. <laughs> just fly through the door. Everything will be fine. You're sweetie, you're doing just fine. Also, how uh, everyone in the bar is just like, oh, don't worry. This happens all the time. <laughs> it's fine. Fine. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think that was the moment when I was watching this. And it's like I should tell everyone I know who likes the Yakuza games to watch this because they will clearly enjoy this movie a lot. Oh, for sure, for sure. If they're if they're not already in a city hunter, they should get on that. <laughs> Definitely. It has right. way more way more Makori than, uh, <laughs> <laughs> than Yakuza does, though. This is true. <laughs> Oh my god, I love it. I love it. Alright, now we've, we're have we done with the new. It's time for the old. And here's where it might get a little... Mm, because these characters ha- are from the series. They're from the franchise. And we all know what they sounded like in Japanese. How is their English going to do comparatively? Well, except for one. We'll get to that one real fast. Um, so let's talk about Umi Bozu. Miki. And Mini Bozu, who I really just is in here because I wanted Umi Bozu to say, my robot son, and start crying. 
<laughs> and then it didn't happen and then it was sad but whatever it's a cute little robot um umi bozu from the series is kind of like rio's um rival ish at first like they fight each other at first but mm-hmm. then they kind of get to be friends they go on um Umi Bozu hires Ryo for some stuff and they're pretty much friends. Um, through their exploits, he meets his, I believe, did they actually get married? I don't uh, remember. It's been a while since I've seen it, so I can't remember. I want to say yes, but I could be so, wrong. So wife slash girlfriend, Miki, um, and they run the Cat's Eye Cafe along with a little tiny robot who is there for some unknown reason in this movie whose name is Minnie Bozu. It's their robot son slash daughter, their robot baby. Um, And God bless them all. Um, (laughs) Speaking before we go into this though, those cat's eye girls with their cameo. Oh, it was so good. (laughs) Uh, I was screaming. Oh, it's, it Uh, was very satisfying because uh, like, if you are a fan of, cat's eye and city hunter like the old ones uh you know they they put the cat's eye cafe in city hunter as a nod to cat's eye obviously but you never see them in no. like the show really like at all like it's kind of just like wink wink like <laughs> cat's eye cafe and after all these years you're like <gasps> we get to actually see them oh my god i'm so happy <laughs> i i was i was screaming um, I was watching it and then we were watching the series and I was just like, I saw the name of the cafe and I was like, oh, this is a crossover. This is a crossover episode. At first I thought Miki was in Cat's Eye and I, cause I couldn't remember what they looked like. And mm-hmm. I was like, is that her? Is that the girl from Cat's Eye? He's like, no. I'm like, okay. So when, when are they going to cross over? Like, where's the crossover episode? When are they going to come in? When's the crossover episode? And <laughs> Chris was just like, no, sweetie, it, it's just the name of the cafe. Cause like the people who did the series are the same like and i was like oh okay and then this Mm -hmm, happened and i was mm -hmm. like holy crap and he was like there you go i was waiting for the ball to drop and i was like (laughs) oh what a great what a great ball dropping moment um so in the english dub the new english dub umi bozu is played by chris rager and i don't know because i don't watch dragon ball super but is he really called somebody named mr satan oh yes oh yes yes mr satan I That's was like, is him. it Satan? I was like, no, it's got to be Mr. <laughs> no, Satan. It's, no, it's, it's Mr. Satan. It's, it's Mr. Satan. Yep. <laughs> or um, what do they call him? Called him in the old dub, Hercule. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's what I think so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but no, he he is Mr. Satan. Yes, that uh. is his name uh, because his daughter's name is Videl, which is devil spelled <laughs> back. All jump, all jumble. Oh, God bless it. Um, he also plays Arlong in One Piece and Zampano from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Miki is played by Michelle Rojas, who plays Shima Nishinina in Kiss Him, Not Me. Best girl. Can- Can't even talk. Kanan from Love Live Sunshine and Ko Yagami in New Game. And Mini Bozu, the little robot baby, is played by Sarah Wiedenheft, who plays Teresa Wagner from Tata Never Falls in Love, Toru from Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, and Ruby from Love Live Sunshine. Um, so this is like the only part that I'm just kind of like, meh, over, because in the original Japanese, Umi Bozu was like such a character Mm-hmm. And I don't, I don't know if this has to do with just the movie not having really enough time to kind of flesh him out as it did in the series because he's very stoic like in the series until he like opens up or he like gets embarrassed about something or mm-hmm. like he's mm-hmm. embarrassed about, you know, Mickey wanting to marry him and he's like, no, no, not going to happen. Like the very strong silent type. And in this movie, I kind of felt like it was kind of like one note until it got to the very end when there's the big action scenes and that's when Mm -hmm. Umi Bozu and Miki really got to shine um I don't know I just like in the series he always kind of seemed like the silent comic relief and other than the parts about you know his robot child I didn't really get that out of this um yeah it's really hard in a in a movie that's basically like 
uh, mostly fan service for like the older fans. It's really hard to balance like, oh, hey, here's like all the characters that you know and love and they're back uh, with a very satisfying plot. Like, it's not going to be, like, 100%, like, you know, on on the ball at all times. Which, like, I understand. Like, I was I was mostly like, oh, it's just good to see them again. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Okay. Um, um, but I, I, I do... I do totally admit that uh, you are right. And he didn't really seem like he had much to do or say until, like, the end of the movie. Um, but it was just nice being like, oh, man, yeah, remember him? Oh, what a great character. <laughs> now he has a robot son. And now he's Aww. a badass. It just took an hour and 20 minutes for him to get there. <laughs> yeah, it took a while. <laughs> I Like, and I thought that... Uh, Miki, like Michelle's performance, she seemed very mature in contrast to Umi Bozu. When mm-hmm. I don't, I don't remember in the Japanese like her ever being that mature. But I mean, they own a cafe together, and they're kind of like you know, I kind of like attune them to like, I don't know, this is gonna sound really bad, but like old grandpa and grandma sitting on the couch or sitting on the porch <laughs> drinking their lemonade with their robot son, watching Rio chase girls by down the sidewalk. And I'm just like, I, if, if I kind of like attune it to that, I can, I can get it. Um, you do feel like the love that Miki has towards Umi Bozu in her voice. I thought, especially towards the end. Again, I think these characters just shine towards the end. And then mm. Sarah Wiedenhoff as Mini Bozu. She is just adorable and so cute. It was so cute. I was like, what a cute filter they use. Like, it was like everything about it. I was like, oh, I want a little robot son too. Maybe I'll have to like order one off Amazon or something or get a Roomba. <laughs> At the end where he, where the cafe was damaged and he's like, oh, Mini Bozu. And he's like digging through yeah. the rubbish. Oh, that was so sad. Makes your heart <laughs> sad. <laughs> but he came that. back. He I came know. Back. Mini Bozu 2.0. <laughs> Only upgraded slightly. <laughs> Only slightly. That just means there's more to love. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I mean, I feel bad saying it because like I I enjoyed what there was of Chris Rigger's performance, but I just didn't feel like literally until the last 20 minutes that there was enough of that umi bozu like in it Mm -hmm. Mm. yeah it's it's if i had to really pick like a least favorite thing about this movie is that it feels like you know because we wanted to see all these characters that we missed and we're getting all of these characters it feels a little unbalanced in like how much we're seeing of like who because um one of the one of the things that i was a little disappointed with was for Ryo and Kaori, like, you know, we didn't get to see a lot of, like, them interacting and seeing their relationship and why they're so right. great. Like, we, because we had all this story to do, so it was kind of like, here's a cute little moment, but it's only for a moment, and then we have to go on to the next thing. Um, and so it was kind of the same with him and Miki. Like, it was like, we get these cute little moments, but, like, it kind of feels like a little... Like, okay, this is the stepping point to the next point. We gotta go. <laughs> we gotta... This movie has <laughs> gotta keep running along. <laughs> like, we have plot. Here it is. Please enjoy. No more robot son. No. <laughs> Just give me Aww. a whole movie about the robot son. <laughs> a little give, spin off. <laughs> yeah, give me, like, a two-minute OVA at, like, the end of the movie. Like, I'd be content. Oh, that would be cute. <laughs> quiet little slice of light show about we're running cat's eye cafe can the cat's eye girls cameo absolutely yes oh plot twist they've been piloting the robot the whole time <laughs> mini mini boos is their spy to make sure they not stop blowing the cafe <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of actually waiting for something like that to happen. I was waiting for, like, the robot to be, like, a spy for, like, either the rich dude or for the cat's eye girls. But, no, it was just there. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, wasn't the robot from the rich guy's company? I feel like it was. So that's why I was yeah, kind of like, like yeah. is it going to be an evil robot? I just watched Child's Play recently. Maybe, like... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, because like she offhandedly mentions that in the beginning, like it was made by that company. And so I was like, oh no, it's going to be an evil robot later. But then it wasn't. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess they just wanted to like maybe give them a child, but not actually have them have a child. Because, you know, if they had a kid in the movie, it's canon now. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Maybe maybe there was, like, an argument there. Like, you know, the writers in Japan were like, we should have them have a kid. No, they can't. Because that would signify time has moved on. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. We'll just give them a robot from 2019. Just give them a, a robot baby. Okay, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> Good compromise, everyone. <laughs> At least he wasn't a drone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would have been weird. <laughs> oh god, I'm on. I, how do you how do you like the little muscle man? <laughs> little muscle man, little. big muscle man. Now I have macho man by the village people in my head, <laughs> and it's not gonna go away. <laughs> At least, you, yeah. at least you have a good song stuck in your head. <laughs> I can't wait for the dusty old song for this episode. Oh, you bet. <laughs> Um, I, I, I am in, I, I mean, I think I'm in agreement because I think Chris and Michelle, I think are very well cast in these characters and I, and you know, I thought they were good for what they got, but they don't get to do that much until the very end. This is part of the reason I'd like to see this cast come back for another, you know, special whatever, um, because I'd like, it's just like, oh, it'd be nice to see more of them playing these characters because they clearly have a good, they're well directed on, they clearly have a good grasp on them. I especially liked when the Cat's Eye girls show up and Umi Bozu just kind of has to grovel about like, oh, there's a perfectly good reason why your cafe has been completely obliterated. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> there's a perfectly <laughs> rational explanation for this. It was, you know, just cl clearly, ter it's like, oh my god, the bosses have shown up. Moms, I can explain. <laughs> Moms. <laughs> um. I'm gonna write so much fan fiction now. <laughs> Do it. Um, yeah, I think like I think they, they they played the characters really well, and then interacting with Mini Bozu was just really like I'm a I'm a sucker for robots. If you want to pander directly to me in your media, putting a robot in it is a great way to do it. Uh, it can be an evil <laughs> robot, it can be a cute robot. Either way, I'm very happy. So, uh, you know, Minnie Boos is just so adorable. Just look, look at, look at him. He's so happy. He's so bright and cheerful. How can you not love him? Uh, it was just like, there, there were just, a lot, there were a lot of fun on screen. And I, it would have been nice if, you know, there was another, you know, 15, 30 minutes to this movie. They could have gotten a little more meat on it. Um, but for what we got, like, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I thought they were just, they're very funny. They, then again, like. I don't have a lot of pre-experience with these characters, but there's just this feeling of, like, this feels right. This feels like this is how these characters are going about doing things, and I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm Yay. All right, now it's time uh, for my personal favorite character. I'm sure nobody is shocked that it's <laughs> Psycho Nogami. No. Are you... <laughs> Like, I, ha I asked this on Twitter once, are you a psycho or are you a Kaori? And, like, nobody replied. And I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> That's because my feed is full of people who are obsessed with boy bands, anime, and diabolic lovers. Nobody's going to know who these cool girls are. Um, <laughs> Breaks your heart. But I would like to be the psycho. Spelled S-A-E-K-O, not S-P-S-Y-C-H-O for those yes. in tune. Psy psycho. Psycho. Sayako. Yes. Um, so Sayako is played by Marissa Lenti, who wrote the script. Uh, she has also played Alicia Florence from the Aria series, Chiaki from Gamers, and my favorite, Momoko, my spirit animal, from Nanbaka. Um, I think Marissa Lenti does no wrong, honestly. She's great. Um, the thing that I have a thing with here is that Again, in the series, which we don't have enough time to flesh out, Psycho is like this sex bomb. So coming into the movie, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to see what she's wearing. I can't wait to see, like, how she's going to tease Ryo, like, what's going to happen. And, like, the only kind of mention we get about this is in the very beginning when Ryo pulls out all those coupons of sexual favors that she owes him for making him do all the work for her. And she's like, no, you destroyed the city. You can have one. And he's like, oh... But, but Psycho, um, she should be the sexiest girl in the movie. Um, and I felt that it was really downplayed. 
but I don't think that that's like any fault of the performance. I think it's a fault of the movie itself. Because in the movie, if mm-hmm. I wouldn't have seen the series, I'd been like, oh, she's just a cop. Right. Yeah. And I was just kind of like, oh. but since I knew that Psycho was the sex bomb that she is, um, I thought uh, Marissa played her very sultry while still being professional. Um, honestly, I thought it was really great. Like, again, we have another case of the movie is kind of truncating what this character could be and could do. And now I need a sequel. Mm -hmm. So it could be all about psycho. (laughs) Yeah. I was actually really surprised at how they sort of downplayed like the sexy aspects of uh, some of the characters and situations. Like I was thinking they would actually like be a little bit more explicit in some of that. Um, But it was very tame. (laughs) like <laughs> question mark uh in in some regards because like you do get a little fan service here uh and there but nothing like very explicit it's it's all very like soft and cheesecakey and Sayako is uh, her personality is like really softened a bit um yeah. since since the series uh which I was kind of surprised I thought for the movie they might play it up a little bit but uh not really um, but I do agree that um, Marissa was very good. Very, very good as Saiko. Um, she's she's one of my favorite characters in the original series as well. And uh, I thought she sounded absolutely fantastic. Like, that was excellent casting. Uh, wouldn't change it. A no. plus. Very good. <laughs> good wanna, girl. <laughs> <laughs> what a good girl. I'll be like, if I what a good you- girl. If I give you 20 bucks an episode, can you just redub this episode for me? Here's me with my imaginary $20 I'm handing out to everybody who worked on this. Jesus Christ. I need more money. $20 for everyone. So It's the same bill. I keep passing it around. <laughs> so, Amon, because you hadn't really seen the series or anything, did you get from this that she was supposed to be like this please, you know, let me step on you kind of girl. Oh, yeah. No, the... Okay, good. (laughs) That was the main point. The, 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 just between her attitude and the way Marissa plays her and the, the reams of tickets that Rio has, I was like, okay. (laughs) Okay. He's never gonna get it. Oh, that was very clear to me, and it's like, why do you have these? (laughs) This isn't go... This woman is out of your league, man. Like... So out. Like, I mean, no. <laughs> Never. Look, look, it's, Never in a million years. It is, it is very cute that you're entertaining the fact, but, like, I hope you're adjusting your expectations because. The Come reality on, is. The reality is completely <laughs> different. <laughs> like, this, this is the same woman who basically fools her lackey into cleaning up the park that has just been destroyed at the end, and it takes him, like, a full minute to realize what he's just agreed to. It's like, no, you don't stand a chance. Hey, man, mm-hmm. when a pretty girl asks you to clean the park, you clean the park. <laughs> Who knows what you're going to get out of it? Nothing, really. But you you will also get da, you will da, also da. get a useless ticket that she made in Photoshop in five minutes. <laughs> you won't even get my passed around twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you get you get it. It's psycho bucks. That was a little, that was a little <laughs> portrait of her in the middle. <laughs> I want some. Who's got Photoshop? <laughs> let's, let's go. Oh, I love her. She's my favorite. Again, I'm sad we didn't get to see more of her, but that's to no fault of this dub. It's to the fault of this movie. But it was still good. All right. And finally, we have our two main characters from the series that come back again and again. With a 100-ton hammer and the boy who gets hit with it. Uh, first, we have Kaori Makimura, who is played by Morgan Loray. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Because my middle name is the same as that, but without the accent. That's not how I pronounce it. So I hope that this is correct. Um, she has played Akane Owari in Danganronpa 3, The Despair Arc. Seraphim in Is This a Zombie? And Daya from Love Live Sunshine. And then we have Mr. Stephen Fu, who plays our best boy, Ryo Saiba. He plays Yasuo Nanbu in Star Blazers 2199, Ginji in Kakurio, Bread and Breakfast, Bed and Breakfast for Spirits, 
and Shota Yashiro in the unfortunate anime entitled King's Game. I'm so sorry, Stephen Fu, that you had to watch King's Game. All right. Oof, man. Um, so, so these characters, they have to carry the whole movie. And I don't know, I kind of I kind of want to start out talking about Ryo because he really needs to carry the whole movie. And there are two like main levels, I feel, to Ryo Saiba. And one of them is the Mokori level, but the other one is like the action hero sweeper level. And Mm -hmm. when Ryo first opened his mouth and Stephen Fu's voice came out, I was like, nope. Oh, really? I was like, I'm going to pass because he was in sweeper mode. And I was like, I had just listened to um, the Japanese version. And it's so like kind of low and like growly and like kind of like, oh, like there it is. Ryo. And then. Yeah. Yeah. I Uh, heard this. That's Akira Kamiya. Like, yeah, he's he's got a he's got a great voice. (laughs) Akira Kamiya is great. And I heard this and I was like, his voice is so high. I was like, is this is this the sweeper voice? Like, I, I, if this is going to be the sweeper voice. OK, this is going to be a thing. Well, we'll let that pass, because as soon as like the Mokori voice kicked in, I was like, oh, there he is. Mm-hmm. I was like, this is perfect. Like, never change. This is great. And as the movie went on, like I did, I did get used to more of Stephen Fu's voice coming out of Rio Saiba's mouth. And I, I liked it like towards like as it progressed, like I got it. Like, I understand that, like, you can't really have, like, super all out zany wackiness and, like, then completely change to Akira Kamiya. Like, there has to, <laughs> there has to be, like, some sort of bridge. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I liked it. Like, I, I went back and watched it again and I was like, okay, like, I get it now. So it took a little bit of getting used to, but once I got used to both sides, I was, I was cool with it. But Rio has to carry this movie, and oh my god, when he went like crazy talking about the boobies and the nookie, and I was just like, <laughs> "Oh man, Stephen Fu, how much coffee did you have before you got in that booth today, sweetie?" <laughs> Enough to get him hyped, apparently. <laughs> but um, I, you know, when I when I watch a dub, I try to think of it as like, okay, they're not trying to do a one for one. They they're bringing, you know, their own, you know, what makes them unique to the table, and try to, you know, judge it on that merit. Um, because it would be really hard, like you said, to compare to Akira Kamiya. He has just such a very strong, iconic voice, and he's been in the industry for so long. Um, I was honestly surprised that he was he came back for the uh, Japanese version of this because he's like yeah. pushing, he's pushing like eighty now. I think he's yeah he's you know, at least seventy. Yeah, he's no spring chicken <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, no, I thought uh, Stephen did like an excellent job uh, trying to you know bring out this guy that's like. <laughs> You know, a little too horny 24-7. Um, but also try to make him a little more grounded uh, when needed be. Uh, because that's, you know, kind of like you were saying earlier, like you kind of have to be two characters in this series, like at all times. You have to be the, the wacky version and the regular version. Right. And I think he found a pretty good balance. Um, there were some times where I thought... Uh, he could have gone a little bit more serious, um, like brought it down just a little bit more. But I know that's like got to be like really difficult in like a character like this because like that's not normal, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> that's just like not normal. Um, but no, I thought he did like a really good job. I was I was really on board. Um, I mean, especially, you know, that opening scene with, like, the action scene, the chase scene. I was just mm-hmm. like, yeah, I am all in for this. <laughs> like, And then they started so playing good. the old music, and I, like, lost my shit. Oh, and, and it was Angel Voice, too, which is, like, that's my, my favorite. Yes! That's my favorite. Um, that's my favorite of the openings. Like, I just love that opening so much. Like, the first one's good, but, like, Angel Voice is just, like... Mm, it's mm-hmm. so good. Um, so, like, 
in this way, like, this movie is entirely pandering to old people, like, old fans like me. Like, you know, I get to see, like, you know, this great action scene with, like, these characters I love, and there, there's, like, a bazooka being shot over, like, the Godzilla <laughs> Hotel Cafe. Like, ah, this is everything I want. <laughs> like, it's so good. Um, but, yeah, I thought he did a, a, a great job of of like you know when the serious parts happened like i think he did um a really good you know trying to slow it down tone it down make him you know be a little bit more grounded and then have to like instantly go right back up to the <laughs> mokori levels like in the very next scene which cannot be easy like it it, it must be so hard um so i commend him for having to be so like on his toes and flexible about it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, my brain just died for a second. Oh, don't worry. Hello, about it. Well, welcome to the part of the show where I really wish I had coffee. Um, oh, <laughs> Kaori, I I kind of feel it was in the same way, like as. Rio is because she gets serious a lot of the time and a lot of the time she has to play the straight character um, but mm -hmm. when but when there's hammer time <laughs> when it's hammer time I mean she like doesn't put on the big genie pants but she sure knows how to swing um, <laughs> she she always has to have a head on her shoulders um, to deal with Rio's bullshit um, and when she met Shinji, like she was just kind of happy and she's like, wow, maybe I can leave this life behind and go do something else. But no, her heart's always with Rio and it's on a, on a, on a level, it's, it's hard to, to compete with Rio's level of Mokori crazy. So <laughs> I think that Morgan did a good job mm. just trying to keep up with him, like, you know, as many times as he has bulging heart eyes, she has to hit him on the head and be like, no. It's like a bad dog <laughs> with like a choke chain. You know? She just has it's to yank and be like, no. Stop it's like it. That, it's like the Inuyasha sit boy <laughs> for, a, for completely different reasons. <laughs> oh my god. Amon, what did you think about these characters? Uh, I, I, I had a lot of fun listening to them. Uh, as I... <laughs> As I mentioned before we started recording, I for some reason under the impression that City Hunter was a serious show. I don't know why. I think maybe I read a description of Crying Freeman and thought it was like that or something. I, I have no idea. Um, <laughs> wow, two very different things. I, it, it, it's, it was clearly just a thing where I knew it was like, it's a very like masculine 80s thing, and I know what those are all like, so clearly it must be cut from the exact same cloth. I was very wrong, obviously. <laughs> frankly, frankly, I'm kind of happy I'm wrong. I probably I had way more fun watching this than whatever weird version of City Hunter that would be like. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know if I'd want to <laughs> hear about that version. That's how uh, it's uh, that sounds really grueling, <laughs> and not in a fun yeah. way. Right. Um, <laughs> but I I had a lot I just had a lot of fun watching these two. Um, I especially, uh, Steven was the, one of the leads in one of my favorite shows from last year called Robbie Hachi, where he also got to play a very, a very oh, ridiculous yeah, character. I forgot that was him. Um, so I was, it was very happy just to see him here. Cause like, I like his acting and also like, I agree. Like he, he does the Macquarie stuff really well. It was like, okay, this is who this character is. I'm here for this. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> um, and I agree that I think I think some of the more dramatic stuff he didn't nail quite as much, but I'm sure like, well, for one, he's playing a character where like in the Japanese they're getting the guy who's literally been playing him for what thirty years at this point. Uh, that's yeah. Oh, yeah, you know that's, yeah. that's those are big shoes to fill regardless. Um, but I still think I think he still did a solid job, and I feel like so much of the overtop stuff was so well done, and I never yeah. and I never thought I was, I was never sitting there thinking like uh, this is so. This could be nice, but the comedy is just not landing. It's like no, he was really on top of it the whole time, uh, and a lot. And I, so much of this is City Hunter's not silly all the time, but it's silly enough that like if you're not nailing those moments, it's I feel like it can just start being a real drag because it's like no, oh, he's drinking beer while holding a big plate in front of his genitals and he's naked. How's this? Good? <laughs> 
I assume, I assume the goal is eventually you'll be so drunk you might drop the plate. I'm a little unclear on how this game works, but he seems to know what he's doing. <laughs> um, I'd say the same thing with Morgan. Like I thought she she played very much the like, oh Rio's acting up again. Got to smack him in the head with a hammer. Got to got to set off the booby traps in the apartment. Got to keep him in line. Um, and I thought she she just did that really well. She was just really like peppy and on point. Um, and I, th I did think she played her her scenes with Shinji very well. I think there was this sense of like, yeah, I could, I can I can settle down with a nice boyfriend, and there'd be fewer, you know, chasing terrorists through the heart of Tokyo. Yeah, that might be that might be that might be a nice way to go about things. But I'm thinking, Kauri, I understand, but let's be frank here, you'll be bored in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, me personally, I kind of read that as she was like. Well, I know this would never work, but at the same time, I get to do this and make Ryo insanely jealous. <laughs> so there, that does there is an unquestionable benefit to doing that. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Also, free fancy food, and the girl loves food. I the mean, girl can eat. I, look, look, I had, <laughs> look, I had, a, I had a friend who would go on Tinder dates just to get the guy to pay for dinner and then leave. So, like that, yeah, like I believe that. <laughs> Well, it's a it's kind of a running gag in like the original series that she's like, uh, she really loves food. Uh, she can she, she's kind of like a like if you've ever seen like a Fushigi Yugi, she's kind of like a Miyaka mm. type, like huge stomach can eat like crazy. Uh, I see. Um, which they didn't really play up that much in this, which kind of surprised me. I was like, oh, they're going to a restaurant and she's not going to be like, I'll just order everything and just like you know, <laughs> eat everything, which I thought was kind of a missed opportunity comedy wise but i guess they were going for a more serious tone in that whole uh, <laughs> uh scene but um but no i i totally loved her as uh Kaori. i thought she did a great job i liked her way way more than the uh old adv dub actress oh um, yes she had so much more personality and pep without sounding like really grating or screechy which I think the old Kaori kind of did at times, and that kind of just would take me out of it. But um, she sounded very natural and pleasant and nice. Uh, and when she got mad, you believed she was mad. She wasn't like fake anime mad, if that makes sense, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Which no, she... I feel like the, the ADV one kind of fell into that category a lot. Like the just kind of too over the top, like, whoa, 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 like. <laughs> stuff which i'm not really a fan of um but no i think she pretty much nailed it and together they sounded great together um they they made a really good team and that's like the most important part when you're talking about city hunter is like do yes. Ryo and kaori sound good because if they don't you're kind of screwed yeah, that's that's ooh, i'm, I'm, I'm imagining Maybe I should go track down one of those ADV dubs and see what that's like, because that just sounds punishing. <laughs> I they're, believe they're on Crunchyroll. Oh, oh, they yeah. are? Okay. Yeah, I believe some of the dubbed stuff is on Crunchyroll. Uh, yes. It's, uh, it hasn't aged all that great. Uh, no. <laughs> Much like no. some of the comedy, it didn't age super well. <laughs> but it's there. You're watching it, you it's know, like, yep, the... this was made in 1991, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> oh man, it's it's a thing. I think like one of the most important things about City Hunter as a whole, like everybody was saying is Rio and Kaori, like their relationship has to be like part buddy comedy, part like budding romance. And I think they nailed it here, which mm -hmm. made me happy, except as always, Rio just doesn't get it. <sighs> Just want to yep. hit him over the head with a hammer for another reason now. <laughs> like it's very akin to um, if you've ever seen the '80s sitcom Moonlighting, where it's like <laughs> uh, we're business partners, but maybe we like each other. But we also act like we want to kill each other, so it's fine. Yeah, that's that's the you know the attitude that's that we should appeal. all be going for. Yeah, <laughs> the love the love hate relationships. I'm down, one thousand percent. Oh my and gosh. I gotta say, I loved that little ending, the little thing at the end where they took like highlights from the old episodes yes. and like reanimated them. Like, 
oh, that was really cool. Oh, <laughs> I was not this- expecting that, and I, it was such a nice little like, if you're already a fan and you, you know, really like the series, like you're like, oh, I remember this, and I remember mm-hmm. that. Oh, uh, that that wedding episode friggin' kills me. Oh, just, yeah. Just, the <laughs> of course they have to put a thing with Kaori in a wedding dress in this too, just mm-hmm. so they could show that in the trailer and tease the <laughs> shit out of you. <laughs> <laughs> but they also uh, spoiled the cat's eye twist in the trailer, so thank they, God I didn't watch it. They did. They did. I mean, I mean, I thought. The thing I saw in the cat in the trailer with Cat's Eye, I thought was going to be like just a like a wink and you miss it sort of thing. But the fact that they were actually in it and they interacted with like the City Hunter characters, that was the thing I was like, <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> yes, they all jumped out of that airplane, and I was like, <gasps> God bless. And they played the City Hunter, or they played the, the fucking Cat's Eye, cat's eye theme. Ah! <laughs> that was so good. I, I was a little sad that they wore their second outfits and not the first ones, because I like the first ones better. <laughs> but if, you know, we're going chronologically, they would be wearing the, the second one. So it's like, I get it. I guess. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm just being nitpicky here. <laughs> I'm like, why didn't they do my favorite outfits? <laughs> Me. <laughs> Why doesn't Psycho have a bigger slit in her skirt? I don't understand. It's fine. Why aren't why isn't this movie catering to me personally? I'm very upset. <laughs> <laughs> I just started watching this two months ago. But man, it's like I did it in 1987. Let's go. Oh god. <laughs> Life. Well, all of that being said about the dub. Final thoughts on the movie and the English version of City Hunter Shinjuku Private Eyes. I I mm, I started watching City Hunter because the boyfriend got me into it. He's like, you're going to really like this. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Like the first thing I saw, I was like, why is this dude so horny? And he's like, that's it. That's the joke. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I love it. I was like, yeah, let's do this some more. So he he got me into it then I started watching the series and then while I was watching the series like on the old shitty ADV release um they dropped the news about this movie and I was like oh my god I can't believe they're actually gonna do it it's gonna look so great um I wasn't disappointed at all other than like the fangirly parts of the OG City Hunter where like oh Umibozu should have like had more stuff to do like Sayako should have been a bigger sex bomb like that Mm -hmm. but coming from and i haven't finished the whole series so um but coming from watching like the highlight reel of the series before this movie it's such a nice gift to people who enjoyed the 80s or the 90s version or watched any of the old movies or the ovas to to come back you know 20 years later and see these Mm -hmm. characters again And I thought the new English dub is leagues above the old one. And I'm so happy that it got the care and it got like, you know, the writing and the directing that it deserved and all the performances were really good. Like it just made me really happy to watch this movie. I don't think I stopped smiling while I was watching it. So Mm -hmm. I I had a really good time. It was quite the ride. Yeah, I this this is definitely... Um, a huge love letter to old City Hunter fans uh, because like you know kind of like I was saying earlier like the moment like that that first chase scene and like the opening you're like yes yes I am here for this let's go (laughs) (laughs) and you know you get to see all your favorite characters even for just a brief moment here and there you get to see uh, like so many you know well beloved characters and they're doing their thing and you know it it could have been like you know a, like you said like a little b- bit more time here and a little more this and a little more that but like for just a big like hey remember city hunter and how good it was here here's some more <laughs> you're like oh, yes yes <laughs> thank you oh my goodness i like this and like the whole like we were saying the cat's eye thing was like such a treat like that was just like you know, the cherry on top of an already, like, 
huge Sunday. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, it, it's not perfect. And I wouldn't say it's like, you know, the best City Hunter thing ever. But it's, you know, it's a nice soft intro to City Hunter, I think, mm -hmm. if you've never seen it. Um, because my partner watched it with me and he's never watched any City Hunter anything. And he, he thought it was fun. And when I asked him, I was like, did you feel lost? Did you feel like you knew what was going on? He was like, no, I, I pretty much got a handle on like what everything was about and <laughs> who everybody was. Like, you know, I, he was like, I wasn't confused or anything like that. Um, so I think it works as a pretty good soft intro. Like if you were ever thinking like, you know, what's City Hunter all about? Like, I feel like this is, you know, it gives you an idea. And it's nicely animated uh, for the most part. The, like you said, the dub is really nice. Like, I'm so glad that Discotech really put so much love and care into this because mm -hmm. it's what it deserves. Like, City Hunter has been like a fan favorite for like older anime fans for years and years and years. And that ADV dub was just like, meh. Like it was, it was fine, but it wasn't anything to write home about. And I feel like they found a really good cast with this and everyone really did a great job. You could tell they were working their butts off to make this possible. And I was just like, yeah, this is really good. And it made you feel happy and nostalgic and gives you the warm fuzzies. You know, it's not like the perfect movie or anything but if you're like me and you're like man city hunter sure was fun let's let's watch a city hunter thing and you sit down you watch it afterwards you're like yeah that was good <laughs> that makes me just want to watch the show again because especially at the end where they're like here's the highlight reel of yes. city hunter and you're just like oh yeah remember how good that show was god <laughs> thank god I it's should... all on crunchy roll yeah and it's like the nice you know, updated picture version. Yes. <laughs> Thank God. Until you get to season three and then it gets <laughs> crappy again. Oh. But <laughs> I have a feeling a once Discotech releases it and gets the masters from Japan or whatever, it'll look nice. Yeah. Because it still has the ADV subtitles on it. So I checked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, um. this one looks really bad. <laughs> so it'll, it'll yeah, get I better. Totally I totally forgot that like they hadn't um they hadn't put that out yet so they probably were just like well here's the old one <laughs> for the time being so it's like eh well if you're watching it on Crunchyroll you know you can watch it for free so it's like no big deal exactly you're, you're getting it for free <laughs> <laughs> don't complain it's for free <laughs> damn it but oh yeah it's just i mean i'm i'm pretty biased because like even with all of its flaws i love city hunter to death like it is really like campy in some respects and like dated uh when it comes to like say like the humor and like some of the language and all this other stuff but if you look past that as you know it's a product of its time and that's kind of like you know stuff that was acceptable in the 80s uh, <laughs> um, it, it, there's still like so much stuff to fall in love with with City Hunter like the action's really fun the music is amazing the animation is gorgeous the characters are great I mean it's just a lot of fun and um, this movie basically is just more of it which is great Whee! Mr. Amanduel this is a blast uh, like Speaking of someone who, like, never seen a bit of City Hunter before, like, this was a lot of fun. I felt like I could follow everything that was going on. I could recognize things that are clearly, like, shout-outs for the fans that were... I could make, you know, if I needed to make enough sense of them, I could. Uh, like, I never felt lost or anything like that. Uh, and I'll, I'll be honest, when they started doing, like, the highlight bits and the credits, it's like, should I be writing these down so when I definitely go binge this on Crunchyroll in, like, two days, I know which episodes <laughs> to start... Like, this 100% made me want to watch more City Hunter. Yeah, uh, Like, this, this, was, this, was very, this was very much like, oh, this, this is definitely a, a property I will enjoy, and I should absolutely watch more of it. Just for my, like, I will enjoy it, I will be happy. 
Uh, like, I'm so glad I watched this just as I feel like, you know, wow, now I have, like, there's all this show that I can go experience now. And I know what I'm, I know what I'm in for, and that's so fun. I feel like I really get to do that these days. It's so great. Yay. Yeah. And then you can uh, watch it's, Cat's it's... Eye. Exactly. Yes. Yes. I... Uh... Honestly, it's really hard for me to pick, like, from the two Tsukasa Hojo things, like, which I like more, Cat's Eye or, or City Hunter. I just recently, like, I think it was last year, rewatched Cat's Eye because back then it was it was leaving streaming. So I was like, oh, I've got to rewatch it before it leaves streaming. But, but now it's back on streaming. So it's like, oh, oh, OK. <laughs> but, you know, good for you. You can all watch it. Um, but, like, they're both really great for, for different reasons. Uh, so it's, it's like I, I said before, por que no las dos? Uh, <laughs> and for this movie, I can have both, which is kind of nice. T- two great tastes that taste great together. <laughs> but I do, I do hope that like, if you do watch this and you do think like, wow, that was really fun. I kind of like these characters and like what they're all about. That maybe you check out City Hunter because it is a really fun classic show, and it's just it's really really gorgeous and really nicely made, and I wish more people, more younger fans, I should say, um, gave it a chance because uh, it's really nice. <laughs> it's it's it it's got great it's pro- music. Like oh the the music as the children say slaps. It does. <laughs> 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 and and all the all the music that you hear in this movie are songs that are from the show. So, uh, when they started singing "Oh Sarah," and my heart just kind of thumped. <laughs> ah, that was so good. Oh, uh, God, I love City Hunter. I'm I'm gonna finish this and Cat's Eye. It'll happen probably before the end of quarantine, whatever that ends. Yeah. Woof. Uh. Yeah. You'd think it would be time to like binge all the stuff that you never thought you were going to watch. And you're like, oh, I have all this time now. And then like I sit around and I was like, wow, this City Hunter movie was the first anime that I've watched in like two months because, you know, why do that when I can watch Survivor reruns on Hulu? <laughs> I, I know that Richard Hatch won, but what about the other guys? And then he got arrested for tax evasion. This is how my quarantine has been, fam. All right. I'm sure you don't care. You just want to know, hey, where can I watch City Hunter Shinjuku Private Eyes? Well, here, I can tell you. You can watch City Hunter Shinjuku Private Eyes on Crunchyroll, both dubbed and subs. You can hear everything that we're talking about. You can also buy it on Blu-ray from Discotech. And the Blu-ray is really nice. It has an exclusive interview um, of one of the producers from Otakon by Justin Savakis and Mike Tool. It's got um, some uh, footage from the second week premiere in Japan where all the voice actors and the producers come out and talk and everybody says Mokori a lot. It's really great. You should go buy it. And it's cheap. <laughs> it's cheap. It's like out, like out of print-ish now, but it'll come back. Don't worry. It'll come back. So you can watch it there. And if you liked this podcast, um, you can follow Dub Talk. You can follow us on Twitter, on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify, on Tumblr, I guess, if anybody's still updating that, um, and on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, I want to thank you. This is the first time I've done this, so bear with me. To our Patreon supporters in the $5 tier, B. Morris, Crimson Echidna, Michelle Travis, Miraculous Corazon, and Nico Robin, but with Yowie hands. And in our $10 <laughs> tier, <laughs> we want to thank... I'm sorry! I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't that something? Was that, was that Nico Robin with Yowie hands? Yes! Yes! That is brilliant. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. But like whoever whoever you are, that's that's great. You made my evening. <laughs> Yay. And in our ten dollar tier, Anthony Simpson, Carly Lestikow, Jacob Wilson, J2, aka Jared, Julia W, and Marissa Lenti. Thank you so much for supporting our show and being super radical and totally tubular, as the 80s kids say. 
you know. <laughs> um, if you want to follow us, we're also available on the internet, but please don't throw Mokori coupons at us because that's going to get you in the no-fly zone and nobody wants that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and on YouTube at Anime Palooza, where I talk about Udapri and whine about how stuff gets taken off of streaming with no notice. I'm looking at you, 80 titles in Sentai's catalog. Or... I'm happy about things that go up on random sites like Retro Crush, where you can watch um, what just came out today. Dear Brother, it's coming. Yes. Oh, my God. It's so good. God, somebody yes. dub that. I'll cry. Um, oh, my God. That would be amazing. <laughs> just could you imagine like that and Rosa Versailles are like my two like <sighs> holy grail. Please <sighs> dub this. Oh, that would be. Like, if Rosa Versailles got a dub, that would be amazing. After all these years. Oh, like, nobody would do it, I feel, but it's there. Um, you can also follow Amon and all the things he's about to tell you about. Oh, thank you. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at, at AmonDuelUS. Duel has two U's in it. I talk about movies and comic books and music. And uh, as, as want, I have a dusty old song for you for this episode yay uh so before i get that i want to, I want to reiterate the music of this in this movie is great these this is these are such wonderful songs i especially want to t- uh shout out get wild by tm network uh which i thought yes. was just like i initially i initially i because i not having experience i wonder it's like is this a new song for the is this a new song for the movie because this is a pitch perfect 80s pop rock song and it's like oh it's one of the old opening uh, uh, ending songs well that makes sense this is a perfect song to end on this movie so <laughs> good choice there uh but uh usually i like to pick a lesser known song to highlight in these but i'm going to be very honest with you whenever i tried to do this i would just look at the title and private eyes by hollow notes would just go through my head <laughs> and i could never really <laughs> get off that particular tray because it's like there's not really a better song to go with this this what what better song to go with this very 80s movie, this very 80s movie about a P.I. than an actual 80s song about a P.I.? There so, you go. So, so just to do, obviously you've probably heard Private Eyes by Hollow Note. So to twist it up a little bit, I'm going to recommend uh, the Bird and the Beast cover of it, which I like. And is also a very 80s, but in a slightly different way. So that's fun. Yay. And Dawn, our very special guest, thank you so much for coming on. I hope you had a good time. I sure did. This has been a blast. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for coming. Yay. Tell everybody <laughs> where they can find you. Well, you can find my podcast, uh, the Anime Nostalgia Podcast, where I talk about old anime, manga, fandom, and fandom history uh, for people like me who are older and experienced anime way before the 2000s. And before the internet was a thing. And if you want to learn about that, or if you're old like me and you want to reminisce about that kind of stuff, you can listen in and learn about uh, older shows like City Hunter. I haven't done a City Hunter episode, but like now I kind of feel like, ooh, I'm getting the itch. I might have to do that. Ooh, you should do it. <laughs> I love your podcast. Like every time I listen oh, to you. it, I'm just like... I remember this show. I remember this show. Oh, this was great. And then there are times, I think there was an episode um, on They Were 11 that I listened to. And I was like, I've mm-hmm. never heard of this, but goddamn, I want to watch it now. And then I get all sad because I can't find it. Oh, yeah. Like, as, as much as uh, I love how, you know, a lot of this old stuff has been coming out, sometimes I go through things that like they were really big at the time and now they just kind of have fallen into obscurity which is a shame but uh uh, i really wanted to highlight that because maybe if i tell people about them and people go hey anime company i heard about this cool old thing you should license that cool old thing and maybe it'll happen you know i'm putting that energy out there into the universe it works Um, but but yeah, I, I mean, I like to think it does sometimes because I did an episode on Robot Carnival and literally a month later they announced it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and the same with um, El Hazard. I did a thing on El Hazard and literally a little while after that, El Hazard got picked up again. So, you know, was it me? Maybe. Or <laughs> either that I'm, or I'm on some kind of crazy wavelength with, this, with somebody. Either way. Anyway, um, but you can find that podcast uh, pretty much wherever 
good podcasts are sold. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, whatever you use for your podcast. If you search for the Anime Nostalgia Podcast, you can usually find us there somewhere. Um, I am also on the Tumblers. Uh, I am like one of maybe the the ten people out there who still use the Tumbles. Uh, <laughs> so the podcast is also there. Uh, you can find my the pod the podcast blog is animenostalgia.blogspot.com. Uh, the Tumblr is animenostalgia.tumblr.com. Um, and uh, I have a personal Twitter. I am at Bunny Cartoon, all one word on Twitter. Um, you can hear me yelling about old anime and manga and horror movies and posting pictures of my orange cats. <laughs> God bless them. God, the bl- I don't know why I keep saying that this episode. I think it's because I literally, no joke, just watched the Survivor season where everybody was talking about God constantly. And so now I feel like I have to do my due diligence and be like, oh, no, wait, this isn't it. But anyways, (laughs) thank you all for listening. I it has been like since February since I've hosted one of these. So I don't remember. Amon, did I get all the bases covered? Did I do it okay? I think so. Yeah. Nothing. nothing Do I get my Hmm? Mokori coupons? I mean, do you want them? No. (laughs) Well, we could just we could just throw them in the fire then. That's all right. Okay, I do want those psycho bucks though. Oh, we can give you those here. Go ahead. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you guys all for listening. And is this the last Dub Talk Summer at the movies? If it's not, there might be one more, or we could be the end. But what a way to end it with a bang! Yay, (laughs) a Mokori bang. Oh, no. Uh, um, So before we get demonetized, I'm going to go. Love your faces. Rock on Boston, rock on Cleveland. Get wild and tough. Yeah.